Hello, 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 everyone. <clears throat> How are you all doing today? <clears throat> I am, oh, let me get myself together. <laughs> Just looking at myself, I'm like, woo! Yeah, okay. I came on a little early because I'm trying to share this with my groups. And I have a little something special that I'm going to do tonight. So, um, while I wait on my guests to arrive, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to, um, like I said, share this with my groups. Um, if you are watching, please share this with your groups too. Um, the more, the merrier. We're starting something special tonight. And of course, my phone wants to ask at Cray Cray. And let's see if I can find myself. I don't see myself yet. Oh, there I am, all the way down there. Okay, so I'm going to share this with my groups. That didn't work. Facebook has changed this again. So therefore, I'm having to go jump through hoops uh, just to get this done. So if you all could just bear with me for just a moment while I share this. I have to go through three different things just to get to uh, one group. For each group, I have to do that. So that's why I'm on a little early tonight. So that we will start on time at 7 p.m. So if you want to go grab a glass of water or some, um, some munchies, you can go do that. Well, I post this to the groups. How was everyone's weekend? Let me see. Let me turn this off. Let's see if I have any comments. How was everyone's weekend? <clears throat> what did you all do this weekend? I am curious to know. I finished celebrating my birthday this weekend. I had a fun time and I thank you all for all the birthday wishes and everything else that, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Hello, Miss Laura. Hello. We are live. I had to come on live so I could share to the groups because it's Facebook has changed everything and that great, great. Uh oh. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm having to share this individually. I can usually just go down the list and just punch the buttons and, and share it to the groups. And now I have to go hit the share button, hit the write a post, hit the no, I don't want to ask the nanny, I want it in a group. And then I have to select the group. So it's a process that I'm going through right now to get all this shared. All right. Yeah, so. I know. Um, like it, yeah, it changed the way to do things with Zoom too and and everything. It's just, it's much more complicated than it used to be. Yeah. I understand there has to, change happens. Yeah. <laughs> but don't let it mess with us. <laughs> But but those of us who are got, we just not we just got this part right and then you change it again. No, <laughs> like don't do that to me. I just had it, so now I'm having to come on a few minutes early so that I can get everything done. Um, how was your weekend? It was good. I actually had a postpartum. I was teaching a postpartum doula training this weekend. 
Yes. That was that was good. Had a fantastic group and we had a good time. Great, 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 great. Okay, so <clears throat> now that I know my number one fan is watching. Hi, mm -hmm. Mitches, how are you? Okay, so one of the reasons I came on early is because I received something in the mail today. And with Ask the Nanny will be three years old on the 1st of September. Yay! So I just thought that this would be the perfect time to open this. I got what I like to call a little happy in the mail. Can you all see that? I know you can't hear me. But yes, I'm going to open this and I'm going to show you all what's inside. My friend who has been with me since the almost the very beginning, Meechus, she made something for me. And I am so excited to open this and share with everybody. Okay, that's the back of it. Oh, and there's a note. Okay, hold on. Let me read the note first. It says, oh, look, happy summer. Can y'all see that? Oh, cute. It's so cute. And she made me a card. Oh, oh there's all kinds of stuff in here. Oh, you're incredible. Whoops. I forgot this has it. <laughs> you're incredible. And um, it says, Handmade with Love by Mitch's uh, for pin crafts. She does pin crafts. Ooh, okay. Let me put this over there. There we go. But you are a spectacular woman. <gasps> Oh, and the little butterflies. It's so cute. Okay, so this is what it looks uh, This thing is mirrored, so I can tell. Oh, how fun. And one of my favorite colors. I'm hanging this on my wall in my office. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Mitches. Thank you so much. I'm hanging this on my wall. I When I went to... Uh, uh, I almost said Las Vegas. It's not. I didn't <laughs> uh, when I went to uh, to Louisiana to the uh, to the conference in New Orleans, uh, Matthew gave me a mask that I have all over there. So now I need some wall all over here to match that. So I'm putting this one over there, and my mask is over there. So this is what the letter says: Dear friend, I think. I thank life because our paths crossed, because that is one of the reasons why I am happy. Since you are a special friend. Also, thanks for multiplying my smiles and reducing my sadness. Having your friendship is a privilege for me. Okay, she's going to try to make me cry. Uh, <laughs> you are one of those friends who leave true works of art in the heart. When you, <coughs> when you need me, I will be with you. I cannot keep you from stumbling. I cannot keep you from stumbling. I can only offer you my hand to hold, uh, to hold you and make sure you don't fall so deep. Never forget that in my heart, you have a special place. I love you and I send you a big hug with love. <gasps> So okay, I gotta find a special place for this. This is cute. All of these things. This is gonna be my bookmark. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> how are you all doing? Thank you, Mitches. She's watching. Thank you, Mitches. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it already has a special place right over there on the wall. It's gonna go across from my mask that I got from Matthew. Okay, so. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ask the Nanny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know I'm a little late saying that, but yeah. Um, I just had to get those things out of the way. Oh, and the last thing that I want to mention is this pen. If you have not ordered your Proud Nanny pen, hold on, let me take it off so you can see what I'm talking about. 
If you haven't ordered your proud nanny pin, I think she may have a few more, but I'm going to bring it to the camera. It says proud nanny. Oh, your kitty cat's going to play the piano. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm trying to I'm gonna put this back on, but uh I got this pin from Clearly Nanny. Uh contact Crystal Crawford or go to clearlynanny.com and order your pin. This is the first in a series of pins. She's got collectibles. So uh if you don't get one of these, you'll get the next round. So tonight I am starting a series. And it's called the Coronials. Now, I know that there are going to be a lot of babies. There have been a lot of babies conceived. And those babies are going to start coming around the end of October, November, the last quarter of, of the, the year. October, November, December, and uh, parts of January. All these babies are going to start popping up. And I know that a lot of newborn care specialists, including me, are going to be very, very busy. But I also know the economics part of this is that a lot of people were laid off or they are working from home, they're working part time or whatever the case may be. And they're going to opt to hire nannies instead of newborn care specialists. What I want for you all to know is what to do and when to do it. So we're having a series from the first, tonight through the end of October on the coronials. I want the nannies to know to be prepared for how to educate the parents, how to uh, handle breast milk, how to handle preemies, how to handle multiples, how to uh, it, tell them whether mom is not is going through uh, postpartum depression. So you you can recognize the signs so you can call somebody for help. Um, how to swaddle the baby because swaddling is important. How to, um, if you want to, um, if you're there already in the home and Sometimes we're thrust into positions that we we really don't know what we're doing. So I, I have a doula, a doula trainer coming on, and she's going to talk about what a doula does and when you need to call for help and just give you some little, this is, let me make this clear. This is not a class. This is a few tips for you to write down in your notebook so you will know what to recognize and when to call for help. And so just so you won't get in over your head, because sometimes things catch us by surprise and we don't know what to do. So I, I want to make sure that you are prepared for all these babies coming because there's going to be an influx of babies and people are going to be hiring nannies left and right. And some of them, be prepared, are going to want you to live in because of COVID. So... Just make sure that, and we're going to do something with uh, contracts too, so that that live in, you won't be, uh, people won't try to pay you, you know, less than minimum wage to live in because they think, oh, well, I'm giving you room and board. So that should slash your, your, uh, your salary into a third. No, that's not how that works. I'm living with you for your convenience not for my convenience. So if you want it convenient for us to live with you, then we still need to be paid our regular salary. Benefits, room and board. Salary stays the same. <laughs> so just so you know, tonight I have with me Ms. Laura. Laura, she, she, uh, on her page is Laura Dula Nance. So I will let her introduce herself to you and tell us a fun fact. Okay. Well, I am Laura Nance, <laughs> Laura Dula Nance. Um, I tried taking that off my Facebook one time and I got in a lot of trouble from some of my friends. So I am Laura Dula Nance. Um, I live in North Carolina and I am 
a postpartum doula and an educator for new families. And I, um, let's see, yeah, I, I train for Kappa. I am a Kappa trainer. I am the senior pro program advisor for the postpartum doula program and the new parent educator program. And I guess my fun fact that I use a lot of times anyway is that I am a crazy cat lady. And so, you, you know, if you were here a few minutes ago, you caught Pandora in the background trying to play the piano. So I had to had to close it. But she'd been trying to get in my lap the whole time. So she might make another appearance. <laughs> because you're not giving her attention. She's just like a, a child. Yeah, <laughs> Children, <yes they> are. <laughs> Children are the same way. Once you start doing something else and ignoring them, yeah. guess what? I need your attention. Come on. Talk to me. <laughs> so tell us. How did you get started uh, be in the new parent educator field? Well, it kind of happened by accident in a way. I was a childbirth educator and a labor doula actually first. And as I was teaching classes for new parents or you know, for people while they were pregnant and being a labor doula, what was happening is that as soon as babies were born, a couple days in, a couple weeks in, I was getting phone calls all the time from my clients and my childbirth education students because they're like, "What do I do now? How do I how do I do this? You know, you you taught me how to have a baby, you helped me have a baby, but now I've got this person and I don't even know what to do with it." And so it kind of just evolved from that. I started adding a lot of new parent information into my childbirth education classes. So it was this kind of childbirth education, uh, postpartum, newborn care, new family class thing that it became. And then in 2014, Kappa asked if I would be the senior program advisor for the postpartum doula program. And I had already shifted still doing some birth work, but had shifted into a lot more postpartum work by that time. And one of the other trainers for Kappa in that program, Kimberly Bepler approached me and she was like, we need to create a program that is like childbirth education, but everything that happens afterwards. And I'm like, yes, we do. That is a fantastic idea. And so Kimberly and I both had been, you know, teaching this stuff for, for years at that point. And so we actually created the program for Kappa. We talked about it first of all in 2014, but we didn't actually get it done until 2017 and started training in 2018. But that was how it happened because we saw the need for a program to actually teach people how to teach parents for what happens after the baby is born. Okay. Well, I know I, I work as a newborn care specialist. But before then, it just, I don't know how it happened, but it just seems like all the people who had newborns or were getting ready to have a baby, we want you to be our nanny and we want you to start immediately. And I'm like, okay. And well, what do I do here? Well, what do I do there? Well, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And I'm just like, okay. So I kind of like, the nannies that are getting ready to have this experience, I just kind of just fell into the role of, I need to help mom so she'll know what to do with her baby. Because I know at some of the hospitals, like you said, they teach, you teach them how to have the baby, you teach them, you know, you know how to push, how to breathe and all this other stuff. But it's like, okay, so is this normal? There's a little red mark right here. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's probably because the baby just scratched itself. <laughs> that's why the little red mark is there. But they don't know that. And 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 it's like everything is new. And uh I have to I teach them how to take care of the umbilical cord. If there's a circumcision, I have to teach them how to do that. And especially daddies, I have to teach them how to change a poopy pamper with their little girls because they don't want to touch them. And I'm thinking, okay. How about we get some gloves so your hands are really not touching them? And how about we take the wipes and you can use the wipes if you want to put some diaper rash cream on it. There's this little paddle thing. You don't even have to see. We made it so easy for you. And I said, you know, I, and and then I taught them how to turn, how to fold the uh, 
the, the baby wipe into a little square so that they, I said, now, I know this is going to be very, um, because my son, he tickled me. He said, mom, I can't touch her like that. She's, she's a girl. I said, boy, <laughs> this is your daughter. And if you don't clean her, you're going to be in a whole world of hurt more than what you're doing, doing now. And he's like, but, but I said, come here. Fold it this way, fold it that way, fold it this way, fold it that way. Now just take the corner and here you go. Get another one. Here you go. Well, how come I can't just use this one? I said, because you're rubbing the stuff all back on. I said, no, get a clean one. <laughs> so it's amazing the little things yes. that I take for granted that I'm thinking, how come you don't know this? But when you are a new parent, and you're nervous, and you're going through postpartum, and all the visitors, and it's just overwhelming, and you're trying to breastfeed, and the baby's keeping you up, and you can't sleep because you're uncomfortable, and you're in pain. It's just so many ands to it that you're like, how in the world did, I, did she have this baby? And because I remember thinking to myself when I had my kids, how in the world did I get through this? But I had my mom and my grandmother there to help me. So nannies are going to be there and they're going to have to take on the role of the educator yeah. because that's why they hired you because you are there to educate them. Now, let me ask you this. How um, did you get any pushback from any of the families when you told them that you need to do this or you need to do that, did you get any pushback from them as to, well, why am I doing this? Or let me check uh, with my sister. Let me check with my mom. Let me see what she says. Or uh, the famous one, let me check Dr. Google. Right. Yes. <laughs> now, absolutely. People do, you know, they, they ask you for your help a lot of times and then they second guess you and they go back and they, they check others. And I think that really, you know, a lot of that, comes with the with the territory but i think that if you can really come across as the expert so you have to really go in there with a lot of confidence and just say this is this is what i do this is what i know this is what i'm going to teach you and i think another thing that really really helps is that when you don't know something you say man you know what i don't know let's look that up together and that that really actually helps them to see that they can trust the things that you say, because when you say, I don't know, then they're like, well, everything that she has talked about before, she must know. So a lot of that is in the marketing and the, and the, how you really present yourself as the expert. And then they, a lot of times are very willing to just, they absorb everything that you're trying to teach them. So you, uh, it's all in the delivery. Is that what you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Don't 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 be unconfident. You have to be really, really confident in the way you present things. Okay. So I'm just gonna put this out here. There's a difference between acting confidence and acting arrogance. Exactly. Uh, wait a minute. Very different. There's a difference in being confident and acting arrogant. I don't know. Okay, English is. <laughs> that's I'm like, did you hear what you just said? It's a pandemic. We've all forgotten how to speak. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna stick to that story. <laughs> but there's a difference between being arrogant, like I know it all, and being confident in I know it all. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I just need you to trust me. And at first, it used to bother me. I'm like, why you got to go ask your, your friend who had a baby one week before you did? Like, they know everything. And it's their first child, too. <laughs> that used to aggravate me. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm the expert here. I'm the So don't be like me. Don't get upset because they this is their first child. And they only want the best for their first child. They don't know you from Adam. It takes time to build up trust. And that not, and that's just not the first couple of weeks just because you're there. They're still getting to know you. You're still getting to know them. And if they go check Dr. Google or they go check 
with their sister or their mother or their aunt or someone else who has had a baby because they trust them, because they know them. They don't know you. Think about it. You go to a doctor and you trust the doctor to tell you what's right. But some doctors, you're like, mm, that did not sound right. I, maybe he didn't understand what my symptoms were. And you get a second opinion and mm -hmm. that doctor hits it right on the nose the first time. There's an inkling that goes through a parent's mind that, hmm, let me check and see if that's right. When doctors prescribe me medicine, I always go and check because I want to know what the side effects are because wow. I know my, my I have allergies and I am very sensitive to certain things. So don't get upset when a parent double checks wow. what you told them because they're new at this. They don't trust you. They barely trust themselves with their baby right. and they're trying <laughs> and, and, and they're scared. Yeah. So there's also with so many different things with baby care, there's more than one way to do it. And so we want to help them, you know, that when they check multiple different ways and they test out multiple different ways, then we can help them find the way that that works best with them and fits best into their family and their vibe. Yes. I, I do you suggest I know you said there are many different ways to do certain things. Do you suggest showing them everything at one time or just you know one at a time so they can get used to this one? Or if this is uh, if you see that they're uncomfortable, do you try something new? Or do you just kind of wait and let them kind of muddle through and <laughs> So I am very much an option giver, and that is one of the things in the new parent educator program that we do talk about is you know sharing with them different options. But if there's 20 options, I'm not going to share 20 options. I pretty okay. much feel that about three options at a time is about all anybody can handle. Maybe maybe just two options. We we can try this. We can try this. If these two things don't work, we'll go on to something else. But let's let's see if one of these resonates with you and your family and and the way you want to do things. Okay, because I I I know I like to give them options, but sometimes I think I give them too many options and they're they're like combining <laughs> to my yeah mind blown. They're combining. Okay, so she said do this. Did she said do that? Wait a minute, was that the other one? Uh, was this, is that am I on the right one? And and I think to myself. Uh, information overload. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah. And, but yeah. definitely if they're doing something and they seem to be like, it. it's not working for them, they're not comfortable with it, then definitely that's when I, I'm definitely more likely to jump in and say, you know, how are you feeling about the way this is working for you? Because if it's not working for you, we can try something else. There are other ways to do this. Okay. So when you find that a mom or dad is nervous about if the baby starts crying and they have no clue what to do, do you talk to them about the baby's cries or, or try to help identify those type of things? Um, how do you how do you handle when you see it, it's obvious that they're nervous and becoming overwhelmed? Right. So if the parents are becoming overwhelmed, I'm going to start with them, actually. And I'm going to talk to them about deep breath. Try to relax. Try to relax, because if you're freaking out, then your brain is kind of going to stop working and you're going to forget anything that we talk about anyway. So deep breath. Let's try to calm down. And now let's look at kind of troubleshooting what the what the cry is. And then we'll talk about looking at those cues. What other things is the baby's body saying about what's going on? Uh, what other things is, is the baby's, you know, what are the sounds that the baby is making? And then let's try some of the different things, you know, is, is the baby acting hungry? Is the baby acting tired and, and teaching them those things? But I think if the parents are really freaking out, they're not going to, they're not going to process anything that I'm saying until I've gotten them calmed down. So a lot of times it's kind of, focusing on them first. I'll be like, okay, let me take the baby. And I just want you to take a few deep breaths 
before we talk about this so that you can be relaxed and actually hear what it is that I'm saying. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you calm the baby down first so they can calm down? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. he's like, like, let's calm down, and the baby's still crying. They're like, oh, but, but, but the baby's crying. What do we do? What do we do? So that's why I was going to ask you: Do you calm the baby first, and then calm the parents? Because I know, I notice a lot of grandparents, even as a nanny, the grandparents come to see the babies. It's two, or three, the babies are two or three weeks old, and they finally come to see the baby, and and you know. It's usually the grandpa that's nervous <laughs> and they take the baby and it's like they can fit. Babies can feel your nervousness. So the baby starts crying and they're quick. Go, here you go. Here you go. I'm like, no, no, no. Just calm down. Just, yeah. just have a seat and calm down and just gently rock. Just, just calm down. I said, breathe, breathe. And he's like, oh, look. She's quieting down. I said, yeah. I said, you were nervous and she can feel your nervousness. I said, if you just calm down and breathe and rock, I said, and the baby will be fine. And generally that works. Yes. That happened a couple of times when I'm like, okay, just give me the baby. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not working. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, they definitely, babies feel that energy and they're like, ooh, this isn't safe because the person that's holding me is saying it isn't safe. Right, um, right. Pick up that. Right, and and and, uh, and that's one of the things that um, I try to tell mom and dad, if you're nervous and you're upset and you are anxious, your baby is going to feel that, especially a breastfeeding mom. Because I know she's anxious. Am I feeding my baby enough? Am I not? Am I going to produce enough milk? If you're anxious, it's not going to be a good feed. It's not going to be. Uh, uh, you're going to be more nervous about the child, and you're not going to get the baby enough milk. And and the anxiousness causes your body to react. And I know when I get anxious, I just like you know my whole body just kind of shuts down. So you don't yes. want to shut. Down. Breathe, breathe, breathe. So when, um, let me see what my next question was. Ah, I lost it. Okay. Uh, what suggestions uh, do you have for nannies who are thrust into this position without training? Right. Yeah, that's a good one because that is that's what's going to happen, like you mentioned, um, and it happens now anyway. But I think right. it's a grander scale for sure. Yes. So, and that's where just like I said, number one, you've we, there's some you know good things that they can can learn. Just a few tips about baby care and you know talking to parents and things like that. If they don't already have those skills, then they can learn those skills and then they can, again, confidently share those skills with the parents. And that's probably one of the biggest things is just remembering that the parents are so overwhelmed at this time that a lot of times they don't have time to look things up. And so as the nanny, you might have a little bit more freedom to find the answers to things and then share it with parents. Find some of those skills and those tips and little tricks and share it with parents. And when you do that, again, like I said, you know, confidently, but in a, in a very supportive, caring manner, then it becomes kind of a teamwork with the parents. So you have to be gentle and talk with them just like you would the babies and the kids because nobody likes to be, I, I know as a a young mom, because I, my, I, my, I was like 24, my my child was, um, he was having ear infections and I'm at the doctor and he's crying because we're at the doctor for another ear infection. And I had my hand over his ear. And most of the time when I put my hand over his, his ear, it, it stops like some of the sound waves from coming in. So that vibration in his ear kind of stopped. 
and it would keep it from hurting and, and wiggling all that stuff around in there. So I had my hand on the side of his face like this and there was a mom, another mom in there and she, he started crying. I put my, I deliberately put him in my lap and had my hands over his ears because I didn't know if it was double infection, ear infection, but I knew it was in one ear because he kept going like this at that ear. So I put my hand over his ear and uh, she looked at me and she's like, we're not going to spread any germs to him. And I'm like, what? You held that baby like you? And I'm just like, I'm just trying to comfort my baby. What did, I was already upset because I was up all night. I was like, and you coming in here and telling me that I'm not doing right by my baby and we're not trying to spread germs. And, and I mean, she just went on and on and on. And when the, by the time the woman called us into the office, I was exhausted from the woman trying to tell me what I was doing wrong to my baby and how I should be doing this and how I should be doing that. And I was like, uh, can I get a, a word in edgewise so you can find out what really is going on and you just judging me? No parent, especially a new parent, does not want to feel like they're being judged, like wow. they're not being a good mom or they're not being a good dad, because that's like, uh, that's a self-esteem thing. That's a postpartum, especially when we're going through postpartum. The last thing she wants to hear is that I'm not being a good mom. So exactly. when you thrust into that position, you have to t speak gently. Yes. Yeah. intelligently but not like uh not like you're talking to a two-year-old but the inflections in your voice need to be soft and quiet and very calming yes, instead absolutely. of rattling it off well you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do this and you need to do that that's too much at one time exactly and that's it's, one of the things for sure we'll, we talk about in the new parent educator training is, you know, how to listen, really how to listen to the parents and find out what it is that they need. Um, mm -hmm. What's their perspective, show empathy for them and, and trust them that they know their baby better than anybody else and trust them to, to trust themselves, help them to trust themselves and kind of their instincts and, and really help support them where they are for sure. Communication and listening is really really important now i have another question and i know this wasn't on the list but what about <laughs> those nannies who are take charge nannies and mom's trying to comfort the baby they just go over there i'll take them and just what what advice do you have to those take charge nannies because that can be offensive too. And they I know they're only trying to help. Right. But sometimes it can be offensive. Yeah. We really want to think about empowering the parents. And so, you know, if if the baby is really, really fussing, and sometimes we do, we know that because we don't have that anxiety, because we we don't have that same connection with the baby that the mother does that we're automatically just calmer. And a lot of times we do take the baby and babies immediately calm down. But the thing that that can that can cause is that it can cause the, the parent to feel uh, really unempowered. It can make them feel um, deficient in their ability to parent their baby. And so really what we want to do is try to empower the parents. And so we can remind them of maybe things that work to help calm the baby. We can, you know, talk to them, but really trying to help the parent parent their baby rather than take over unless the parent is like, here you take him. I can't do this anymore. Uh, but really it is best to try to really empower the parents and help them rather than just taking over. Cause if we're taking over, then we're the same as some other people in their lives. They may not want around when they're having a baby because all they right. do is take over. <laughs> so we don't want to be that person. <laughs> you don't want to be that person. I, I, I know. I try to be, I won't say standoffish, but I try to stand to the side and act like I'm doing something else while they're trying to, and, and I'm, I'm secretly looking down, but I'm like, 
Yep. <laughs> what did she do? Hold on, with that baby. Uh, okay, let me finish washing this bottle. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not looking over at you. I'm just washing this bottle. Okay, how long are you going to let that baby cry? All these <laughs> things are going through my mind. And I'm like, okay, you are here to help. You are not here to take over. And if that has to be your mantra, then let that be your mantra. I am here to help not to take over because the last thing I want a mom to feel, especially one who's going through postpartum is that she cannot connect with her baby. Right. And sometimes when the baby is crying and they don't know what that cry is because they have, they, have, they don't, this is their first time. Mm -hmm. And they have no clue and they don't know what the checklist is or they don't know what the, you know, how to maneuver these things. Um, they need to find, they need to find their way. Yes. To comforting their child. Uh, don't just be so ready to go. What, put him this way. Turn him this way. Maybe you put him this way. Maybe you do it. Let them find a way to, to kind of snuggle and hug and, and kind of pat the baby or maybe rub their head or rub their back or put them on their bellies and rub their bellies, you know, uh, whatever comforting feature they can find on their own to comfort their baby. Yeah. And it may change because babies are always changing. Yeah, they are. They are changing every day. <laughs> so so um, it may change from day to day. But what are the um, requirements for becoming a new parent educator? Uh, so the, the first requirement is taking the training. And then there are some reading requirements. And there are a couple of different tests I don't like people to panic when they hear the word test, especially when we say we have, <laughs> we have three of them, but uh, two of them are, are fairly short and, and one is multiple choice. But if you know anything about Kappa, Kappa is really, while we, we're a certification, we're a training organization, we're really a membership organization. So we're really, really interested in our members and we really want everybody to succeed. So we're like the doulas for all of the doulas and the educators. So try not to panic about the tests. We're, we're easy with the tests as far as uh, their open book. They, we, you can get some, you know, if you, if you don't pass the test, it's not a panic situation. We will talk to you. We'll let you take the test again. There are, you know, we really want you to su succeed. So we're really easy with that. So, um, so yeah, so there's the required reading. There is the, the tests. There is um, a resource list needs to be created because one of the things is, you know, as the as the educator, as a nanny, as an NCS, as a doula, any of those, none of us are the only person that can, you know, we can't be a jack of all trades. Uh, so sometimes there is a need for other other professionals. There may be needs for other care providers, uh, IBCLCs, different people that can help. So having those resources and knowing who to refer to. And then uh, another part of it is actually doing a little bit of, of teaching. And we, again, that's another thing not to panic about, uh, but we do have a requirement of 30 minutes of teaching. And that can either be done in person or via like what we're doing right now, or it can be recorded just to make sure that, you know, we're the things that we have taught in the training about, about listening to the parents and about being comforting and about how to give different options and how to help them find the resources for those options are being done in, in the teaching. And then just signing agreement to like the CAPA policies. So that's okay. kind of the, the short list. Right. And I promise you all, it is very easy. CAPA is wonderful. I am a member. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, but it's it's a very easy um, process, and I know um, Priscilla Moore mm -hmm. was uh, my lactation educator, and um, awesome. 
Yes. Uh, yes. I had so much fun in her class. You. You had fun. I did more laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Because it was like the stories that she told and, and the things, that she, the, it's just the way her bubbly personality made it uh, more hands-on and and the activities. I'm a hands-on visual learner, so she was perfect for me. Yeah. And I grasped more out of that than me reading the book. Mm -hmm. When she went through it and I was like, oh, she's, yeah, that's right. She told us this and, oh, yeah, she told us that. And, and I was like, when did she tell us this? I remember seeing it, but I don't, I remember hearing it, but I don't remember. I was like, it must have been one of those times I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, and that's but I know she works closely with Kappa and that's, that was my first encounter with Kappa. And then she was saying, well, why don't you come to the conference? The conference is going to be in Atlanta. And uh, it was Alpharetta. That's, uh -huh. I think that's what it was. And I was like, well, I'm going to be in town that weekend. <laughs> So, but yeah, I, that was my first encounter with Kappa. And um, then I had, um, oh, shoot, I can't even think the name on the phone. Oh, okay. I got brain fart today. But anyway, Kappa is a, a great organization. And I promise you, uh, their trainers, the training, top notch. Yeah. So new, if you, and the, oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say the new parent educator training is a blast. Uh, there is no sitting still in that class. It is, uh, it is constant. It is nonstop. We really wanted to make sure that everybody had a great experience, but also walking away with a really great arsenal of ways to teach. So the training is basically taught in the activities and the methods that can be used for teaching. And so it is a very interactive training. And we've we've managed to morph that into the online trainings because of COVID. And it's been a really fantastic training online as well with lots of activities and fun. So like you said, it is very interactive. And that's one of the things. Kappa is not a lecture and PowerPoint and just sit there and be bored for training. <laughs> and, that, and that's what I like because this PowerPoint and, and lecture and I'll be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, what you say? Um, uh, okay. It, no, I, that's not me. I need to be involved. Yeah. And, and I try to, when I teach workshops, I try to get uh, them involved, my students involved, whether it's virtually or, ha or hands-on with my clients. Um, as a newborn care specialist, I offer them the all things baby boot camp because I know they learn classes at the at the hospital. But I want the little tips and tricks like the, the, the two part zipper. OK, you don't want that zipper to come down. You want it in the middle of the night. You want that zipper that comes up so that the baby isn't cold. And because and right. if they get cold. Guess what? You up for another There's couple that. hours. <laughs> you do not want that. So I teach them little tips and tricks that they don't know about baby equipment, about right. um, the, the the things that will make life easier <laughs> and things that will. And, and I have my little dolls with me and I have my little baby clothes and, and I teach them about the power of the onesie mm -hmm. and the blowout. Yep. <laughs> So oh, so sense. is that why that's there? I said, yes. Yep. You pull it down yep. over their shoulders. I said, and that way, all the poop stays here. It doesn't come all up in their face, all up behind their heads. I said, it stays down and stays contained below the waist, all down here. I said, just, just trust me. And, and I tell them, I said, please, please make sure you get plenty of pads for your diaper changing table because it ain't yeah. just little boys that spew in nowadays and little girls do too. I said, just, just trust me on that. And when it happens after the babies are born, it happens. You, I'm so glad we had so many pads. I said, and when you have twins, you need double. Right. <laughs> yeah. Some of those things are the things that people are like, that right there was worth it all. That one little tip was worth it all. Yes. Yes. So I, I try to, uh, I know they, some of them don't have the benefits of 
you know, we didn't get to take the class because this happened and we had schedules. And I said, okay, I'm bringing the class to you. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. And, and let's set up a date before the baby is born. Let's show you how to swaddle. Let's show you how to, uh, you know, well, what about the little things? And I love, love, love that, um, what are those? Uh, it's called Love to Dream with yeah. the little zippers on them. Uh, yep, that become the, yeah, the trend. Sleeveless, I, and, and it's, it's tight again, it's tight in the waist, so they feel like they're all snuggled up tight, and but it gives them plenty of room to move their feet. I, I just need you not to hit yourself in the face <laughs> <laughs> and start yourself at wake, and then I like the little ridges because it's self-soothing. It, yeah. They stick it in their mouth and it's and they're just like, and mom and dad are like, oh, I said, yeah, yeah. that's why you buy plenty of these yeah. in several different sizes because they grow with them. And trust me, these are going to be some of your best friends. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I love the amazing discoveries when they see what they learned before the baby and practice before the baby and what they do after the baby is born. Oh, that's right. You told me to do this. Hold on. <laughs> and I had, I had one pair. She said, hold on. And I'm glad I was standing there because she walked away. She said, I forgot to get, I was like, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Come, 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 come. I said, I said, hold on. Before you walk away, I said, Either put a pamper on the baby, you can walk with them and you won't get wet, or you pick them up and you take them with you wherever it is you're going, or you make do with whatever it was you were going to go, you were going to go get, make do without it, because you can't leave a baby right here. I know they're young. I know they're newborn. And you think they can't flip over. They can't do this and they can't do that. And that's fine. But if you start making a habit <laughs> walking away and it just becomes a habit and then one day that child will flip and you won't know and and all of a sudden you come in here and the baby's on the floor and you're you're screaming and yelling like what did i do what did i do what happened don't make a habit that you're not that you can't break easily because that's not a good habit that's not a good thing to do any at any point but definitely don't make it a habit of walking away because, oh, he can't roll over. He can't move. He can't go anywhere. That's the first thing that I teach parents. Don't start what you can't finish because whether you know it or not, you become, it becomes a habit. So <clears throat> don't walk away from the baby. And don't walk, uh, make a habit of uh, keeping a hand on the baby. I think, oh, there she is. She's back. There we go. Yep, I don't know why I got kicked out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was like, it's time to go, Angela. <laughs> so, so do you have any last, any tips for us? Uh, just in case, because uh, I mean, it is like, 745 right now. Do you have any tips for us for uh, for any nannies who are, I know we are going to be thrust, are probably going through it now. Right. Any last minute tips or tricks for us? Um, I think just, you know, like I said, staying calm, being supportive to the parents and uh, sharing any trips, any tips or tricks that you can as, as a team, you know, kind of being a, a team with the families. So um, I did want to mention that I do have a couple of new parent educator trainings coming up. They are online. And I anybody who watches this that is a nanny and feels like maybe they want to add that a little bit, um, I definitely can give some discounts for anybody who, who uses this name. So if you say, ask the nanny or Angela Johnson and you contact me about it, you will get a discount. So, Okay. So, okay. I'm going to type this into the comments now. Okay. What's the name of the training? Uh, the new parent educator training.
Okay, so how can they find, is it online? They can sign up online or do they need to contact you or how? What, how uh, they? Uh, they can sign up online or they can contact me. My website is lauranance.net. L-A-U-R-A-N-A-N-C-E dot N-E-T. Yep. L-A-U-R-A-N. Okay. That's why I love the, uh, this. <laughs> I can type it in and keep rolling. Yeah. Yep. Uh oh, and that's the problem with the laptop because the mouse keeps moving. <laughs> and I type right in the middle of a word. <laughs> okay, you said, I think I got that right. LauraNance.net for new parent. Okay, so. And yeah. they can get a discount. Okay, I'll forget the discount. All righty, enter. Get a discount when you when you mention Ask the Nanny. So, if you want to be a new parent educator, and you're interested in uh, what we were talking about tonight, um, be sure to contact Laura on lauranance.net for new parent educator. If you mention Ask the Nanny, you get a discount. Yep, absolutely. Trust me, it is a good class to have. It is uh, excellent because when you go in there and you are confident, you're cool, you're calm and confident. The three C's. Yes. <laughs> Remember that. Well. Cool. Now, you will need all three of those. Absolutely. Absolutely. You will. Yep. So and when you when you leave the training, thank you so much out or walk in there cool, confident. So. That's right. Yeah. Got right. this. All right. Well, I appreciate but you having with a smile. Yes. Got this. Through everything. <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> Let them know that you're for the don't walk in there with. No. I'm here to work. Because nothing turns me off than somebody frowning. I haven't even said hello. And you're like, yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I'm ready to go <laughs> already. Uh, no. You want somebody who's going to be happy and loving when you're a brand new parent and you have that new baby. So, Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Laura, for Thank giving you. us some tips about being a new parent educator. Um, Thank you for being the first one up to the plate in the series of the Coronials. Next week, we are going to have Priscilla Moore, and she's going to talk to us okay. about lactation, how to take care of breast milk, because I know a lot of moms are breastfeeding now, and it's important that you know how to store it, how to take care of it, how th that it is liquid gold, and don't you waste it. <laughs> And don't stick it in the microwave. All these different things you need to know. So um, Priscilla is a lactation educator. Like I said, I had so much fun in that class. But yeah. she's going to give us some tips about handling breast milk, how to store it, uh, different things. And when you and give you some tips on when you need to call a lactation educator, when you need to call an IBCLC, when you need to call to send mama to the doctor because your mama's got an infection and, and ain't nothing we can do about it, but she needs to go to the doctor. So she's going to give us some, some tips and tricks. And, uh, and I'm sure she has a new class coming up too. Wow. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. Yay for all the Kappa yeah. girls.
Yeah, the Kappa girls. Yeah. I think I got Madonna girls at the at uh closer to the middle of September. I'm uh -huh. trying to get the 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 real but the, the basics out of the way as in you need to know how to teach the mama first. <laughs> That's the very first thing. If you don't know anything else, you need to know how to encourage mama and daddy and and keep them calm. That's that was that was number one and important to me. Yeah. How to keep them calm. If you know that, then we can work on the rest of it. Right. <laughs> so uh if you're in that position of finding yourself coming up on that position and, and if you know a nanny who needs these refresher courses, we will be going down the line from uh, next week. We have lactation. And I think the week after that, we're going to have uh, Kimberly Bepler here. And she's going to be a little girl. Yeah, yeah I'm, I enjoyed the whole sorority. Yep. <laughs> Getting the whole leadership team there. Yeah, the whole leadership team. I, 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 I only the best for the best. I, 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 I asked around. I said, "Who can I get? Who can I get? Who can I get?" So I am glad that you came and and thank you for sharing those things with us. Thank you for enlightening us and giving us some tips. And you all, it take the class, take the class, take the class, take the training. Uh, LauraNance.net. And mention Ask the Nanny and you can get a discount. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's so nice that my name carries cloud. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We will see you all next week. Oh, and thank you all. I reached my goal of a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Woo woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone who subscribed and helped me over the last month or so to get to that uh, to that number. Uh, it was a goal of mine to reach it by my birthday, and it was 11.59 and 59 seconds. And so I got the email that says, ding, somebody subscribed. I was like, yes, that's it. <laughs> so thank you all for helping me reach my goal you all don't know how important that was to me i love accomplishing goals and i love checking things off on my list and like and i get so excited so thank you all and we will see you all next week you all have a wonderful wonderful week i'll see most some of you tomorrow at 1 30 when i do recipes galore tomorrow is national chocolate chip cookie day so guess what i'm cooking <laughs> Okay. So uh I'll see you all tomorrow uh around 1 30 for recipes galore. Thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye.